Thank you for coming to the Virtual Simulation Lab seminar today. Uh, we are having uh, Pablo Boza, the chemical engineering department, and he will uh, give us some uh, tips and tricks for Linux for beginners, intermediate, and advanced users. So, please, Pablo. Can I start? Okay, thank you. Um, First of all, I want to apologize. Uh, it seems that the title, title of the presentation will change a bit. Uh, I think that the scope that I had uh, uh, tried to reach is too, too wide. Uh, at first, my idea was to just do my normal workflow and show you how I, I do things. Um, but then I started adding some, well, explanation of the small basic commands that. Uh, well, every Linux user should know, and uh, it seems it got quite out of reach. Uh, in fact, I spent like 45 minutes in the trial lecture to get just to the minimum amount that I needed to uh, to get started. So uh, instead of um, all, I was only giving like uh, just a tutorial that you can find online. There are very good uh, online uh, uh, tutorial resources of every kind. Uh, to learn uh, how to either work in Bash or uh, how Linux works in general. So uh, what uh, Brian told me that is the idea of this seminar, which is basically a uh, hands-on seminar where I show you how uh, my experience with th this work and uh, uh, basically m the problems that I have solved or some kind of scripts that I wrote and things like that. Uh, so we decided to change it a bit. So I will basically talk, will be talking about uh, make files, since uh, and how to automate work your work for using it. So that's the disclaimer. Also, that means that since the trial lecture we did like yesterday, no, uh, yes, yesterday, uh, I didn't have much time to prepare this presentation again. So basically, it will be a bit of a mix of what I had before, uh, and just, uh, well, I will try to show the best I can without any uh, prepared demo. I will, so for all the people who already know the things that I will be talking about, if I'm doing something wrong, you can uh, correct me. Um, so, Overview. This is the original uh, presentation, so the idea was to be covering both uh, basic concepts, how to solve some problems, uh, some productivity tips, some hotkeys, things like that, and give a small overview of many tools, of many standard tools. We'll not be talking about uh, the GUI interface, not open office or uh, all that kind of things, but just the command line, that was the idea, uh, with the idea of allowing or, or uh, uh, encouraging Windows users to switch to Linux and uh, for people who use Linux but don't use the command line regularly to learn some new tools and tricks and try to use them. Uh, and well, for intermediate users, uh, perhaps if they are, there is some tool or something that you want to learn better, uh, you can just ask if you have been struggling with some of these. And uh, for advanced users, I think, well, in between of everything was that I was going to talk about, perhaps there was something, uh, something new that everybody can learn. Uh, I think this plan is a bit, uh, it will change. Uh, the I won't be doing demos, I think, today. So uh, wh what, do you have to, uh, what do you need to have in mind when, when uh, getting into Linux? Is that uh, first, uh, Linux has been here for quite a while. And uh, the fact that it's a very long tradition, since I mean the first Unixes were like in the 70s and things like that, um, made it uh, m made the code base of Linux have a lot of uh, how it's called, uh, well, uh, a very broad uh, code base, including a lot of legacy code that perhaps today will be written in another way, but uh, it's still there. And also that uh, the fact that it's developed by a community with a lot of people doing the things in different ways means that it has a characteristic, not a single way to solve one problem uh, mindset. So th that also means that a lot of features must be added in such a way that then they don't break down uh, what was being done previously or by other people. So 
uh, the idea was to cover uh, three main programs, a uh, shell, which uh, we will use to interact with the operative system, which is bash, then one text editor, which I uh, chose bin, since uh, I guess it's uh, a bit different from uh, most other text editors. Probably most of you already uh, use, I don't know, Sublime Text or uh, uh, Atom or Ema Emacs or but uh, well, I think BIM is a bit different from all those, it's a model editor. And a build system, which is GNU Make. So uh, I wanted to start by asking uh, how many people here use Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac? Can I get some hands? How many people use Linux? OK. And uh, Windows? OK, all the people at the back. <laughs> and the Mac? Who has a Mac? OK. OK. So. Um, uh, for the people who use Mac, I think I already said that, uh, or not, uh, here, um, you still have a terminal. It's, uh, Mac inside has uh, what is called the Darwin the operative system inside, and it's, uh, most of it's, it's a BSD operative system, so that means that most of the uh, uh, unique uh, things will be still there, so you can, you can apply them. So... Uh, other software I was trying to use a lot of text utilities to process text, just uh, pipe from one place to another and filter it. Um, some system administration tools, uh, how to install software. Unfortunately, again, I don't have internet since the, uh, the net is not working here. So I will skip that. Uh, it seems I didn't pay my tribute to the demo god, so nothing is working. But... Um, uh, also, the idea was to spend some time explaining all the core utilities. I have put some links there on, on some of the topics that uh, I think uh, you can then go online and uh, you will have a good reference. Uh, the idea was also to use, as part of the make example, wget to download things from uh, online and uh, yeah, navigate a bit there. I will, that won't work. And auto tools, which I won't be work. Whatever. So uh, uh, <laughs> well, I, I won't I won't talk about all these topics in Bash. Unfortunately, the, the it will get too slow, I think. And all the people here in the front that are interested in more advanced things won't get anything. Um, at the end of the talk, I will uh, have some at least one slice on the topics that I really wanted to talk about, but. Uh, uh, for for today, I will be only doing make. So um, Linux also nothing here. Uh, the hierarchy in Linux nothing. Let's keep everything. Uh, how to set signals to processes. Um, bin. Okay, so let's go to the make example. Um, so what Brian told me is okay. You should uh, talk a bit about uh, what you do normally and. Uh, and give a motivating example for the tools that we will be using. Uh, so, uh, to describe a bit of the problem that we want to solve, basically you have, let's say, I guess most of you perhaps have something similar in some way. You have just a table with some, let's say, molecules names and property experimental, experimentally measured, and uh, you have a, your own theory to explain uh, what, why, uh, whatever the value of the property is, what it is, but you still, uh, need to make tweaks and change it until it works. So you basically write a program that takes, let's say, a wave function that is the output of another program that you didn't write, and uh, that from there it obtains the, uh, the prediction for the property, for example. Uh, what you have as an input is basically commercial names or uh, the, the, the cast number or you pack uh, smile strings and uh, you have to convert that to the position or coordinates of the of the atoms in the molecule and uh, unfortunately if there is commercial names probably you don't have a software that's, that translates that so you want to use an online service for that or for something else uh, also you are using like several programs at different stages of this pipeline uh, all of them have their own configuration and uh, some of them might take a lot of time to run you might even need to run those programs on a supercomputer for example 
and uh, you might also want to do uh, several to try several different uh, competing packages to to benchmark them or to check the consistency that they give the same results for example you might want to use uh, gaussian and nwkm and uh, i don't know to to solve the same problem with different packages or uh, and of course, you need to be able to change the configuration or the, some of the molecules or the templates, but you don't want to run everything from the beginning again. You want only to rebuild the parts that are out of date. So if you make a, a, a change in the last part of your pipeline, you don't want to have to be able to, to run everything from the beginning, download all the uh, coordinates and uh, uh, solve the, let's say, the DFT problem again or uh, use the supercomputer again. So what do you used to solve this problem. Normally, I think the correct tool to do these kind of things is uh, GNU Make. Originally Make, well, it is a build system. There are a lot of build systems right now used. In fact, uh, I think Make is losing a bit of popularity, but I think it's still the, the, the standard, uh, the gold standard. Everybody should know how to write and read a Make file, uh, if you're working on Linux at least. So originally it was written for compiling link in software. Uh, let's say here we have uh, uh, two files with are the source code of this program uh, and they include this header file and then you compile those programs and then link everything into an executable and then you can run it to, to get the, some tests for example. What you do in make you basically represent all this dependency graph the uh, so in case what makes what, what make uh, does is decide if let's say if you change foo.cpp there uh, it will only compile and link that part of the tree it won't compile the other one but instead if you change the header file like foo.hpp it will decide that it has to review everything in the case for example you change the tests uh, the executable is still the same so you will only be running the last part okay so um, I think this is another way of putting the same thing. Uh, what you have a, uh, you have to write a make file. That's what we will be writing today, uh, where you put basically all the targets. That uh, how target means uh, the thing that is pointed by the arrow, and uh, the prerequisites, which is where it's this coming. Let's say uh, to buy, to build a house, you need the roof, the electrics, and the plumbing there, uh, which are their prerequisites. And then additionally, you have a certain set of commands that you tell the computer what it needs to do to, to build it. Um, yeah, that's the most important part. So we will show <laughs> some calculation line, which is more or less what I normally work with. Uh, I start from one uh, <coughs> a file with all the commercial names for the substances that I work with let's say uh, uh, cast registry numbers or uh, you bug num uh, names or, or like the commercial name so basically first I split all of them into one file for each one I just request online uh, the XYZ uh, representation or a mall file from a web service uh, then uh, which one file for each one of them I, I pre-process them using open bubble uh, to basically uh, uh, first, uh, change the format from mall file to XYZ, which is the, what I can give as input to NWKM. And, um, and also it can do like force field uh, uh, geometry optimization to have a bit uh, better uh, optimized geometry of the, of the same molecule. Then you basically write a template for uh, the, the software that you will be using for the, let's say, DFT calculation or something. The, uh, in this case, I use NWKM, but the idea is that it's the same for uh, Gaussian. You would have to write a new template file, but it should still uh, work. Uh, you combine these two, and you get an, an input file, which is what you submit to, in this case, Stalo, which is the supercomputer I'm using. Uh, from there, you just make a submission and wait until everything is calculated. Uh, you will get basically the optimized uh, wave function from uh, the DFT calculation or whatever you do. And then basically you have some other program, let's say you wrote it in C, that you compile into a binary and uh, post-process those wave functions to get some, resu <coughs> some yeah, results. Um, 
So I guess I will be showing a bit how a make file is written. And uh, so to start, I will move to another workspace um, just to show some hotkeys because uh, I think I'm missing all that part. If you press just the, oh, let's, we'll open here a terminal. Uh, this is how you basically communicate with the computer here in Linux if you want to use a, uh, is it possible to see right there? Is it big enough? Yeah, sure. OK. I um, think I will start by running it. Let's move this here. It is high enough. Can you read here? The I guess why, whatever. I don't know if the, uh, the idea was to show the keystrokes here down, down here, but it's OK. So. Um, um, First, I will list the files in this in my home folder. Um, I think there was a very small uh, make file here. Yes, and I will use bin to show uh, how it works. So a make file consists on, of basically three things. Um, you have the target, which is here. Um, This is, well, um, I should explain everything from. <coughs> so uh, in, for, for each one of these uh, blue uh, targets, you need to uh, write a recipe, which is like the, the, the pink or red, I don't know, pink, pink uh, rule, OK? That will mean that each one contains the code that you want to, to run. Um, in, in a make file, you first have a, a target. Let's say in this case, is any file uh, that ends in HTML uh, is made from a file with dot name. Or let's take, uh, yeah, let's take this rule. This rule, oh, sorry. I have a different configuration. This rule is, uh, this one is a preprocessing from mol to uh, XYZ. So this one is running OpenBubble. Uh, it consists first on the target, which is, uh, Ah, I should give a simple example. <laughs> so you have file A and file uh, or a target and a dependency. And then here you write the rules, OK? You ha can have more than one rule. Uh, the, if you want, this will only work with single file targets. So if you want to do something that works for any file with a certain extension, you have to use this uh, percentage thing, sign. Uh, so in this case, what I first do is to split all the input files into one file for each molecule. Okay. Then I uh, basically take each here. So he here we have by default, um, let's say, a target that is called names, and we takes we take um, here we have a file called names.o. Let's see what it contains. It contains a bunch of uh, names of molecules, fictional molecules, and some cast numbers. Uh, basically, we want to transform this to XYZ uh, format to basically the molecule. So you uh, basically write a recipe which takes the names and uh, grabs them from an online service into an HTML file. So let me show you with the real one because I definitely cannot explain it this way. Yes, this one is. So <coughs> what I do here, in this case I use a different setup, but uh, basically is I, I fill First, I take this names.all file, which contains all the molecules, and I create a folder called upack, which uh, I fill using the command split uh, with an option called uh, minus L1. To get help here, we use K. So you split it into one line per output file. So you fill the folder with with molecules. Then we have another rule. Mm -hmm. You start from upack, 
and you get HTML files. For that, you use CURL or uh, WGET. And you basically uh, create a search query, which uh, we compose here. Oh, sorry. Uh, which is this string. This is called a makefile variable. Uh, you have two kinds of variables in, in make files. First, this one is considered to be uh, the recursive uh, variant because you basically it is expanded eight, each time you replace it in your in later in the recipes. While you have this other kind of uh, variables which are uh, non-recursively uh, expanded, so it's only re expanded once. In this case, if you see, I'm basically adding to the original path. I'm adding new a new uh, directory. If I didn't use if I didn't use this colon, uh, basically it will uh, go uh, recursively indefinitely and crash. So again, to the recipes. Um, after downloading it, you basically use some uh, redirect here. Um, in Linux, basically, whenever you want to uh, write the command to a file, let's say I do ls, list the files in this folder. If I want to write down to a file, I do like this. Now I have also a file. Uh, if I read what are the contents of that file, it's this. So basically, I'm redirecting to this automatic variable of make, which represents the target. Um, and this other automatic variable represents the prerequisite. Then, um, if you start a recipe here with uh, the add sign, uh, it will be silenced. It won't be appear on the when you execute the make file. Um, then you have uh, okay a bit of uh, we let's say here. Uh, where is it? I have the problem that I'm normally used to working like this and uh, working from some closes. Very hard to read. Um, so uh, what we do then is basically we grab the file and using eGrip, which is basically what we normally use to uh, to filter files. You can use either uh, grep or uh, awk. Oh. Here, uh, we we extract uh, the address where the uh, where the mall file is uh, from this server. The, um, then we take this mall file here, and uh, we download it. Uh, we have to make some also some other additions to the. Uh, to the to the to the address, but then would you download it and you put it again in this uh, in this file? Uh, afterwards, you basically add this uh, open use open Bible to generate the coordinates, change the format from mol file to x y z to nwkm format. And uh, well, you add some additions or something. There are just options, a lot of options here. And uh, afterwards, you basically append the template into the into the uh, into the original file that we have here. So this is it. Should be the oops. Uh, this is um, this is another file here that goes in the bottom of the of the XYZ file with a some small amount of post processing here and uh, we copied it to the output. Then uh, we create here um, a submission file which contains basically all the, all the list of molecules that you want to solve. Uh, we have to do this because sometimes there are some of them that are not uh, available at the at the website or whatever. So uh, we will only list the ones that we already have 
ready and correctly uh, format XYZ file and um, then you submit it with this command. Here, uh, this target is what we call a, a phony target. It's not a real file. It's just a, basically an action that we are asking the make to be able to, to create. Uh, in this case, it basically runs uh, QSUB. Unfortunately, I have to be on the supercomputer to do this. It doesn't work here. Um, uh, this here is called a, a, a variable. Uh, if we go up here, I define the QSUB as QSUB and some options which uh, indicate in which account I'm working it. Um, so basically, you submit this other file, which is a shell script that r will run for each molecule on the supercomputer. Uh, let's say, uh, let's go to the file. Uh, so what is a shell file is basically here a, a, a script that starts with this magic uh, uh, shebang, it's called. It basically tells the computer that which prong you will use to execute it. In this case, it's bash. Um, then it has some uh, commands telling how much computer time you want, how much memory and processors you need, where to put the input, the output, and the error. And uh, then it basically, uh, well, copies the input to some temporary folders, uh, prepares some traps in case it, fa it fails, uh, in case it's interrupted because it, uh, I, let's say it spent more than like 40 hours that we allowed it to run or something and it just runs it afterwards and copies the output back to my uh, working directory. Uh, then we have some other uh, phony targets to clean for example. Uh, normally if you run everything and something was wrong uh, you want to erase all the temporary files that you created so with clean uh, you remove everything and clean runs, we only remove uh, the output from the supercomputer. And uh, finally you have some target called status which gives you just some uh, inf random information that you normally need. Again this at sign means that the, the command itself is not output. Just in the and there are some fixes here because you always have problems uh, at some place and th this requires manual solutions. So yeah, there is the, a terrible introduction to make. I'm sorry, I should have prepared it with more time. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess I will go only to the topics I really wanted to cover, but uh, I didn't. So I guess if you want to talk later when I, we are eating the pizza, uh, I will happily talk about this instead. So uh, um, some small uh, scripts to, for example, take uh, text from a PDF file and using uh, PDF to text, you can extract the data uh, to a, in, it, it basically displays this in a text way, in a text format and you just then use some small shell magic and uh, you can basically extract the same, in the same way that you would copy paste, but you could do it in a semi-automated way. Sometimes you have uh, files with, like, say, 20, 30 tables, and you can do that a bit faster. Uh, also, let's say if you have the text uh, in different orientations and with some things, I think it, it does a pretty good job uh, rendering it. So uh, some caveats of writing uh, shell scripts. Sometimes, for example, if you're working on the supercomputer, you have some environmental variables that are set. Uh, if you then, let's say, create some folder and erase it using this environmental variable, it will work perfectly inside the supercomputer, but if you run it from your computer, uh, it won't be set, so you basically might erase your own uh, home folder. I think uh, some it happened to me, I don't know. Uh, I guess, it's, uh, well, it's a bit silly of me, but... So, um, also how to yeah, maintain a, a, a base install script, basically normal. I, I really like normally to, when things start to get cluttered and uh, a bit dirty, just to reformat my computer and start everything again from the beginning. And uh, 
since uh, there are a lot of things to do, uh, I like keeping a, a just a, a shell script that I run after I reinstall my computer. Uh, I want to talk a bit about BIM, I won't be doing that, but uh, there are a lot of websites that are dedicated to BIM. Some of them, like this BIM Golf, uh, is about basically a competition on getting to solve a certain editing problem with the least amount of keystrokes is really nice. Uh, I think Beam is the best uh, editor for this because it definitely it gives you the fact that it's modal and when you type letters it, they don't appear on the screen it's just each letter is a command makes it a lot more uh, concise than uh, uh, let's say uh, she edit or any other so yeah also uh, this quoting hell thing I think I have a, had a lot of problems with this for example in makefile there is a keyword and uh, there is a uh, escaping <coughs> Uh, Carter so is the the dollar sign uh, in bash is the backslash and uh, when you are starting to put text that gets replaced in another place and then gets replaced in another place you have to always quote the uh, the contents and then you reach a certain point in a time in which uh, you start just adding more escape characters and waiting until it works which obviously is a bad idea uh, but uh, according to TCL, they say that in some languages this is the natural state of things. Um, so uh, also, um, you have uh, in, in your uh, in your whole folder, apart from the files that you normally see, you have some hi hidden fo files. Sorry, uh, uh, every file that starts with a dot, you won't be it won't be showing normally. But are the, those are the configuration files for each program that you have. <laughs> I think the most important are the bash RC and the Vim RC. Um, they are like like this, and they get run every time you start bash or uh, Vim. Um, so uh, since everybody has one of those, and normally that's where you edit to customize your your own uh, environment, uh, I, I wanted to discuss a bit of some nice dot files that are around there. Uh, So also about using uh, wget uh, or core when you download things. Uh, fortunately, there is a way to download recursively and not have to type every time you want to download something, uh, a new line. Uh, the problem is that you might abuse that even without knowing. Uh, so in some cases, you might even receive some uh, mail from the IT people asking you to stop downloading uh, things. So some rules for, uh, let's say, waiting and between uh, downloads and things like that. Um, and how to write uh, portable make files, some details, because uh, the, the in, in, while well, they are mostly compatible in Mac, for example, where it doesn't behave in the same way as in Linux, uh, there are always some small details that you want to change and then uh, uh, well, you basically you can solve everything by putting some flags. Uh, you get either Linux or Darwin by default, and uh, you can just check that and, and uh, all the custom things add them independently. But that requires a bit of experience. Uh, also, you have a lot of trouble trying to install things in the in Stalo when you don't have administrative privileges because you can use the software that they give you there, but sometimes it's out of date and they take time until they, they, they don't just upload the last version very fast. So uh, you have to sometimes compile things over. Uh, and uh, finally, some environmental variables that uh, they are not very well known, some of them, but they are quite uh, nice to write on the scripts. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to write code that works also on, on Darwin, you should use uh, possibly correct uh, so that you get some limitations because you cannot use CNU extensions. You force yourself not to use them, but uh, you will get uh, everything compatible with any other Unix environment. Uh, and the shell options. I think that there are some great shell options there. Uh, normally, let's say when you do uh, ls asterisk, or ls asterisk, uh, I don't know. Um, th this 
this asterisk is a shell expansion. It uh, replaces uh, basically each folder in my current directory. If you don't have any file in your directory, then it, instead of being replaced for nothing, it will uh, still keep there as, a, as an asterisk. In Linux, you can, files can have any, any name, including asterisk. So uh, you can get a bit weird behavior. So changing these options make it a bit uh, more safe in terms of, let's say, removing all your home folder and things like that. Um, and that's it. It was a terrible talk, I know, but uh, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have uh, some questions, comments? I'm wondering, you're using a dollar parenthesis to expand your variables yes. in the next yeah. file. Why not curly bracket? Uh, they are the I, I'm just um, I'm wondering. They, they are the in, inside make files. They are the same in bash. They, there is a difference because uh, with curly braces you can do replacement on the variable, yeah. while with uh, parentheses uh, you cannot. You can run commands from there with yeah. parentheses. But so in make, I think they are the same, exactly the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. No. And uh, it was another thing. Uh, and that is the difference between an environment variable in bash, because you reach the environment variables in make, right? You, if you have to use a double yeah, dollar sign. You have to escape them. You have yeah. to use double dollar sign yeah, exactly. because What's you're the not. Difference, then? Because you can also use uh, dollar PWD, and it's going to be the same as dollar dollar PWD. So what does make do? If you are dollar. PWD, you basically are running. Uh, uh, yes, you get the same outcome exactly, but uh, in one you are basically doing. You have two dollar signs which are replaced to one dollar sign, and then the parentheses are still there. And then bash, what will run is dollar sign uh, and between bracket between parentheses PWD. So it will run it in another environment inside bash. Right. So you get basically the same outcome, but. Um, I think the correct way is with only one dollar sign there. Uh, basically, that's a bit of escaping hell because you are basically having to adding just one more dollar sign there that you don't you don't really need. Uh, so um, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, let's thank Pablo for uh, his talk. Today. I'm sorry for the. Thank you.